Hi there, my name is Michael and I serve as the preaching pastor here at Redemption Hill Church. It is joyful for us, it is a great joy for us to be able to put out these gospel-centered resources. So whether they are messages or blog posts or videos uh, that help you, we pray that they will uh, spur you forward as uh, believers in Christ to be more like Jesus and to serve in the building of his kingdom. But may I add a word of caution, which is that you would not use these resources, however, as a replacement for your commitment to the local church and your submission to local church elders. For God has appointed elders as shepherds over your souls and the church is instituted by Christ as the means by which you mature in him. And so we believe in the local church and we believe that God uses the local church and it is the will of God that you be part of a local church. And so may this resource bless you and encourage you and bless your church and encourage your church, but by no means replace your, uh, the much needed commitment uh, that you must have towards your local church. May the Lord bless you and keep you and may this resource bless you abundantly. In Jesus' name. Um, although I haven't seen the beach yet, um, but definitely enjoying the greenery here. And uh, it's more like God's own uh, kitchen. Um, such wonderful meals I'm having and enjoying uh, with God's uh, people, wonderful fellowship. Um, praising God for Redemption Hill Church and I just got to hear your story last evening. Just wonderful uh, way in which God is uh, raising you up and building his body, equipping his saints. So this morning, uh, I would like to uh, um, preach to you from Colossians chapter 3. Uh, Colossians uh, chapter 3. It's a section on the Christian household, the Christian uh, family. Colossians 3, uh, 18 uh, to 21. Please hear the word of God. Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. We were listening to the second London Baptist confession and if you are paying careful attention uh, God has given his word to us uh, to safeguard us from three enemies the church the believer has three enemies uh, our flesh the world and the and the devil himself and as I was thinking about that not only are these our personal enemies or the enemies of the church, but they take special interest to attack family itself. This morning, we need to realize that families are the basic unit that God himself has made. And God made it wonderful. And it's not somewhere towards the end of the Bible, one small passage about family. But right in Genesis chapter 2, God made the woman for man. And Paul, by the Spirit, he gets this revelation from God that actually a husband and a wife coming together and becoming one flesh is a small window into the eternal plan of God, where God himself from eternity past, he thought and it pleased him that his son should be the bridegroom of a bride that is purchased with his own precious blood. And so if family is a small window and family is wonderful and beautiful, there is no doubt that Satan is going to go against 
family, against husbands, against wives, and to desecrate a wonderful institution that God himself has made. Not only Satan, but the world seems to be increasingly opposing the idea of family, hating the idea of family. Even in Pune, uh, we love coffee there and coffee shops abound. And there is one uh, which is started by the LGBTQIA community and they have these certain uh, uh, notices on their uh, notice board. And sometimes very provocative, sometimes they kind of want to be against family and they want to be in your face that, uh, you know, we want to be against the very unit of family that God has made. And not only that, it's our remaining sin as believers. We want to always go into comfort mode, autopilot, relax mode when it comes to family life. We put on our best clothes when we are outside. But it is said that a man or a woman truly is what he or she is in the home. In the home. And yes, married life, family life is incredibly challenging at times. It is not easy. But will God leave us to figure out family life on our own? Will God leave us to figure out family life on our own. No, he won't. No, he won't. In fact, he is redeeming personal lives. He's redeeming relationship lives in the church. And he, by his grace in his son, is redeeming family lives as well. But on our part, we have to look carefully at how he intends for us to use his principles, his truth, his gospel so that we might apply it in our family lives. And that's where we find ourselves this morning in Colossians chapter 3. Paul has been talking about our personal lives, put off, put on. And then he, he's talking about the corporate life together, put on the virtues of Jesus Christ. And then he doesn't leave the household, uh, you know, just without instruction. In Paul's mind, this gospel, this good news, this, this wonderful truth of union with Christ that flows down or ought to flow down even in our family lives. And so there's great hope for us this morning in the midst of all struggles and the difficulties and challenges of uh, family life that this union life with Jesus Christ can flow down all the way into family life. And uh, God, by His grace, by His Spirit, by His Word, by His truth, uh, can help transform our families. No matter how sad the picture is, He can, uh, by His truth, by His gospel, transform not just our personal lives, but even our family lives. Just a little bit of what's going on in the book of Colossians. Um, Colossae was a small city. It was very famous once upon a time. Um, but Laodicea uh, was taking um, importance, more importance due to various reasons. But Paul doesn't forget this city. Even though he's not been there, uh, Ephiphras has traveled for a thousand miles to meet Paul. There are some false teachers trying to creep in. They are trying to say that Jesus is good, but is Jesus really enough? You need something more than Christ and his sufficiency. Uh, you need some secret dreams and visions that one man in that particular area is having. You need to uh, be connected to some angel worship. You need to have some secret hidden knowledge that only some elite have. And through the, the words that they give, through the secret uh, knowledge that they give, you will be able to go into the next level, in the completion level, in the higher level of the Christian life. And Paul, uh, it seems like one afternoon, he takes up his pen from prison and he writes the book of Ephesians. And then maybe, I don't know if he had chai, oh, I think there was no chai in prison. Uh, but after Ephesians, it seems like he takes up his pen and he writes Colossians. There's a lot of similarity between these two episodes. But 
our temptation is to just jump to Colossians 3, 18 to 21 and say, okay, wives submit, husbands love. So what's the problem? Children obey. Let's get on with it. But that's not uh, how the Colossians would have received these verses. Uh, the Colossians would have heard this entire epistle in one setting. They would have heard this entire epistle in one setting. So what they would have heard is a good report that you have faith in Christ, you have love, you have hope. They would have heard about the glorious Lord Jesus Christ in chapter 1. That Jesus is the, the maker and the Lord and the sustainer of all things. All things have been made in him and through him and for him. Cannot even begin to imagine how glorious Jesus is. Even the great archangels, they have been made in him. Even the universe which we struggle to uh, get to the end of the universe is made in Jesus. Can you imagine how glorious and awesome this Jesus is? And, and this Jesus was given to you and he was incarnated and by the blood of his cross, he reconciled you, reconciled you to the Father. How glorious and wonderful is that as the Colossians get to hear. And then they, they, they got to hear that there is a wrong way that the false teachers want to uh, ask you to live this Christian life. They want, to they want you to depend on human wisdom. They want you to depend on fleshly uh, ideas and fleshly strength. And um, he clearly says in chapter 2 of Colossae that these things do not have any value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. Uh, these man-made rules, uh, these kind of rolling up your sleeves and trying harder, um, all of these things, they do not uh, have any value against the flesh. Now think of that in terms of family life. As husbands, we want to grow uh, more and we want to uh, be, uh, we want to be the husbands that God wants us to be. But the the means, the methodology that we are using, are they fleshly means. As wives, we really understand at the back of, um, you know, our minds that I am um, not where I should be, I should be growing. But what are the means? As children, we know that uh, it's wonderful to listen to uh, parents. Uh, but how do I get there? Um, and I think uh, chapter 3 is where he begins to tell us how uh, the Christian life ought to really be lived. How the Christian life or to really be lived. And Paul, uh, you know, the false teachers would have all these fleshly means. You need to beat your body. You need to stop eating so much prawns and uh, so much. Uh, I can say the word beef here in Kerala. It's amazing. I can't say the word uh, beef in uh, where I come from. Uh, but if you stop eating those things and eat only a veg diet, that will really amazingly take you to the next level in your spiritual life. So all of these things have no value, Paul says. So what exactly has value then? What exactly can make the difference? What exactly can uh, make us to live the Christian life as God intended? And you'll be surprised in chapter 3, he says, if then you have been raised with Christ Jesus. Uh, all of these techniques, all of this human wisdom versus the fact that at the moment of salvation, uh, as somebody was sharing the gospel with you, God's spirit baptized you spiritually into the very death of Jesus. He took you uh, as it were uh, uh, on the cross and where Christ died, you died with him. And he took you into the grave and where he was buried, you were buried in him spiritually speaking. And when Christ walked out of the tomb, you came out. You came out. Uh, as a new creation. You came out uh, with the newness of life as Romans chapter 6 says. Uh, you came out uh, in uh, awaiting the ultimate new creation now. You came out as a child of God with Christ from the grave. You came out with this resurrection life flowing through you. Uh, you came out with a heavenly mind uh, and a heavenly mindset. And so he says, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. You have this new mind in Christ Jesus now. Seek the things that are above. It's very different from wives. You need to, you need to really get on with the program. Start submitting to your husband. 
husbands what's wrong with you why are you being such a, um, a pain you need to start loving good things good things but uh, missing missing the very power missing the very engine missing the very motivation missing uh, looking to christ then for help and his resources and strength and so let me remind us all that marriage life is hard uh, parenting is hard <laughs> being children in this um, millennial generation and 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 listening to our parents is is hard sometimes it's puzzling why do i have to do that um it's my life was a song in my generation and i think in your generation also there might be a song um uh, highlighting that it's your life you can think for yourself you can do everything by yourself for yourself how you want to do it it's hard but think about it through these lenses this morning if you are in christ you have been raised up yeah, i was in chandrapur last week and uh, they told me that um, it's near nagpur and uh, asia's second biggest uh, power plant electricity power plant is there uh, just beside the coal mines and we were passing under these huge uh, 33 kv uh, high tension cables and they say that uh, you can even feel the vibrations if you are under these uh, cables and uh, on a rainy day there's a chance of, of a farmer even being pulled up uh, to those uh, cables so immense power flowing from there not to chandrapur sadly but to mumbai and pune and they are importing power from telangana that's a different story uh, but how powerful is that how impressive were those huge um, structures that generated uh, that power and perhaps you have seen some nuclear power plant or uh, you've seen a raw power um, of some flood or some cyclone or it's just seen raw power but that that's nothing in comparison to Christ's resurrection power you've been raised up with him uh, no longer to live uh, according to the old man and he's conforming you uh, into his very image and so i think that's very important to understand as we seek to be the family that uh, god wants us to be and now we have a new mindset uh, no longer uh, is hollywood and bollywood our coach about family life and some series on uh, netflix and they have some great uh, family life going on in uh, in uh, you know from the 17th century and so uh, you know i can fix my mind on those things and i can learn from those things but uh, we have the mind of christ the bible says and we can focus our mind on where christ is at the right hand of god and we can say uh, that now how would christ want me to do family life uh, how would i please him and glorify him here on this earth uh, after sunday is done and uh, the 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 dinner is getting late back at home uh, how can i be heavenly minded at that uh, very moment where uh, dinner didn't turn out uh, turn out as i expected um, and with great eagerness i came to the fridge and my dad's eaten all the um, all the dessert uh, already and and there's no dessert left for me uh, well um, god's given us this new mindset um, this heavenly mindset Uh, now uh, we can think about glorifying him in the big things in our life and the small things in our life now we can think about pleasing him and glorifying him and then he says that uh, your life is hidden with Christ in God in chapter 3 uh, colosse was no longer a famous city anymore there was some city uh, back there inside the trade routes had shifted nobody really cared about them uh, nobody really uh, you know thought about them they were not making the headlines but he says you believers your your life is hidden with christ in god uh, right now that's the present reality uh, you may be not on the map you may not be on the headlines nobody even knows that uh, this uh, precious church exists here in this uh, locality but god knows and right now your life is hidden with him in christ now how wonderful it is for wives to realize that uh, that right now um, even though the bible calls me to uh, uh, submit um, it's the uh, the difficult word the s word uh, um, and uh, for husbands to love agape it's very very difficult but my identity i'm 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 hidden with christ in god 
he loves me with an amazing love and not only in the father's hands but also in the son my life is hidden in him in god and i'm freed up then to love i'm freed up to submit i'm freed up to listen uh, to what the bible says as a child with my parents uh, the best thing ever has happened to me my life is hidden with god in christ and when christ is revealed then i shall be revealed with him in glory that's this amazing reality the world uh, thinks uh, we are these um, you know less intellectual people uh, believing in god and and believing in trinity and believing in the bible in this day and age and the world thinks very poorly of us but the fact is that when christ is revealed we shall be revealed for who we are so all of these things the colossians have been listening and their hearts are filled with gratitude and and thankfulness right and then paul turns to family life and then he says uh, wives submit to your husbands as is fitting in the lord notice that paul uh, doesn't have 22 genders here uh, there, there are only wives and there are only husbands um and uh, you know we have to clarify these things in our generation this uh, new generation god made adam and eve in the garden uh, we are fearfully and wonderfully made uh, the way god uh, it says in genesis 2 he fashioned eve it says it's not like he just uh, made eve or he just uh, threw eve into the picture he uses the word fashioned so uh, uh, god's brilliance is on display his his time and with a great purpose he made man uh, with a great purpose he made a uh, woman and so he says uh, wives uh, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the lord and notice uh, that just before the this verse he's talking about letting the word of christ dwell in you richly and if you compare this passage with uh, ephesians 5 and uh, 21 onwards uh we see that it says be filled with the spirit over there and there are some things that happen when a person is filled with the spirit doesn't uh, uh just uh, shake uncontrollably jump uncontrollably or um you know do weird things um but when a person is filled with the spirit uh, he's singing um his heart is so full of gratitude and making melody to the lord and the amazing thing is uh, very similar things he says here in our passage when a person is having the word of christ dwell in him richly now our passage doesn't say submitting to one another but in ephesians 5 it says that one of the result of being filled dominated uh, controlled by the spirit is submitting to one another that's amazing submission is the hardest mission isn't it like um, i don't know about here but in pune they tried to bring the helmet rule uh, they tried it once they tried it twice two wheelers have to wear helmet so many things were announced in the newspaper um, and so much fine is going to be taken and all of that but pune kers puneites just don't bother uh, it's like mass rebellion um, and what can the police do it's like mass rebellion nobody cares about the helmet rule and the logic of the punekers is that it spoils our hairstyle uh and uh, the 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 lanes are so narrow it's like uh, the the city with the probably the highest number of two wheelers um, in asia and so we can't see properly on the right and the left when we have a helmet uh, so it's so difficult to submit for us it's it's the hardest mission but here's the good news that when the spirit is dominating a person's heart and when the word is dominating a person's heart there is a new song in his heart there is a gospel song uh, all of the word all of the riches of christ that he or she is learning is settling in his heart and there's joy joy of forgiveness uh, joy of the gospel Uh, joy that i am incredibly loved god never even began to love me and he will never even stop and uh, he has given christ for me and in him i am accepted in the beloved all these things just fill the believer's heart with joy with gratitude and there's a new song 
there's a new song that's the flavor with which we need to see this passage there's a new song there's there's thankfulness um, nobody can ever take the joy of the lord from me uh, nobody can ever uh, steal this salvation from me uh, it's just a matter of a uh, few years a few decades and i will be uh, sitting in the presence of uh, the triune god who was and is and is to come that's the flavor of this passage that's the joy that god can give uh, us and especially uh, wives in this high call of submission uh, dear sisters god can fill your heart as you come under the word as you let the word wash you and uh, in your personal time in your family time uh, in your time uh, in corporate worship and in bible studies uh, as you get filled with the word uh you'll get filled with joy because the word is the word of christ the word is a uh, word of great joy and comfort the word is the gospel of our lord jesus christ and so uh one of the marks then or one of the result is you become willing to submit there's so much joy uh, in our hearts uh, that we be uh, we be uh, begin to submit to one another but especially in family life wives uh, they look at this mission that god has given them and say yes yes not because my husband is so great uh, many of us husbands can testify that uh, many of the suggestions that our wives give uh, ultimately they were wonderful uh, suggestions and it's only our pride that um, uh, makes us think that no 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 i know i know this place i've been here before i think yeah it's just on the right i i i know it no we've been here i know that it's a left over here no 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 i'm i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure we have to take a right and then you know after some time i think uh, we are lost uh, and uh, uh, where where did you say last time we okay okay we have to go there okay let's go there so um, not because our husbands are so brilliant or uh, they are um, handsome nebs uh, handsomeness even if that if that's a word i don't know is uh, never fading um, it's not because of those reasons but our text says um, as is fitting in the lord and i've just laid out for our dear sisters how awesome it is to be in the lord uh, we were once in adam uh, in the first adam uh, our ship was sinking in death and hell and condemnation and god by his spirit by his gospel uh, has brought us to be in the lord in this uh, mystical wonderful fellowship uh, of the godhead to uh, be in christ and so uh, this is fitting in the lord he says uh, to submit now uh, interestingly this word uh, has to do with voluntarily bringing yourself under in the indian army or the police force uh, sometimes uh, the jawans are uh, uh, are taller are stronger um, maybe even uh, more experienced um, in battle than the newly appointed captain from nda he has been sent and maybe he's not so tall and he's not from that area but that jawan knows that this this is the uh, order that has been appointed and uh, he looks at the badge of that captain and he says uh, i will i will listen uh, to what uh, i will follow the lead of this captain um, even in the indian cricket team um, even though Vir virat kohli is like the star um, of the team uh, but right now he looks at uh, the appointment uh, that the bcci have made that rohit sharma uh, is going to be the captain and he looks at that appointment and he says yeah i'm willing i'm willing not all 12 or not all 11 can be captains imagine they are all telling them each other to the field placements and always a team meeting is called always the placements are changed one captain is saying no it should be this way that way that way it's all chaos so this is uh, god's order this is god's uh, divine uh, wisdom not because uh, women are inferior the bible is very clear that both are made in the image of god both have the same intellectual capability the the same ability to know god and love god and follow god and be a, a blessing but this is about voluntarily looking to the wisdom of christ uh, because the the joy that uh, we have in christ and letting the husband lead and and following that lead affirming 
uh, that lead and uh, being happy and trusting God, uh, that God is in control. We are using the ways of God. We are following the ways of God. And uh, even though right now it doesn't seem the brightest of uh, decision, but I will look to Christ. I will look beyond my husband. I will uh, look to the Lord. And Paul says it is fitting. It is fitting. It's beautiful. It's, it's wonderful. Um, that this should be so. It's proper that this should be so. And so, um, just by way of application then, if uh, as a sister you are struggling in this department, um, the answer is to let the word of God dwell in you richly. As husbands, uh, we need to be praying for our wives um, <clears throat> and uh, we need to be bringing them under the word of Christ, the word of God. Uh, wherever the word is being given and especially in family lives, what a, uh, a family prayer, what a wonderful opportunity uh, to, to read portions of scripture. Uh, perhaps these keeches catechism, just, just look up those verses and it's not a quick fix. But over time, what's going to happen is the word is going to start dwelling in her uh, richly. And uh, the glorious Christ is going to capture her imagination, uh, the wonderful Christ and the wonderful gospel. And this joy of the Lord, this joy of the gospel is going to uh, uh, begin to be um, dominating her heart. And she will uh, find the grace and strength in Christ uh, to submit. Also, young people, uh, maybe you think you have a lot of time for marriage and uh, you have switched off uh, from this sermon. Uh, but uh, this is the direction like uh, some of us know that we blinked our eyes and a decade has passed and uh, you young people may be in college right now you will blink your eyes and soon your parents are talking about marriage. Uh, there are young people waiting on marriage. I think it's very wise as uh, you know in church you keep one eye on the Lord and one eye open to see for a prospective spouse. Um, <laughs> It's very wise to see uh, this sister, um, her attitude towards the elders, uh, her attitude towards her own parents, um, her attitude. And if there's some gospel meeting or some program organized, uh, does she always fight and resist and want to be the center of uh, the whole decision making or she's happy uh, to listen and, and be a team player? All of these are markers. Uh, that uh, this sister might be uh, the one uh, that's, a, that's a healthy sign that the word is filling her. Uh, the gospel is filling her mind and the, the spirit is dominating uh, her heart. And, and that would be a wonderful thing to consider as you consider marriage. So that's what a wife who's made alive in Christ, who's being dominated by the word, who's heavenly minded, that's what um, life begins to look in the family. Um, a wife who is looking to Christ and submitting and following the lead of her husband. Now, uh, what about husbands? The same applies that we've been made alive in Christ. And uh, for husbands, the Lord is saying, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. It's a command. And you know that this word is agape. Uh, not love your wives in the first year of marriage, um, maybe two or three more, uh, but love your wives. This word agape is um, heavenly love. Uh, this word is a love of commitment, not convenience. Uh, Tim Keller says like, um, um, if we are used to uh, having a relationship with a grocery shop that is across the road and over time you develop a relationship and you keep going across the road and you buy stuff and you have a decent relationship with that grocery shop. But the moment another grocery shop which is bigger and better uh, is opened this side of the road, closer to home and has bigger, better deals and flashier lights and great offers, it doesn't take us much time to just switch, right? I'm, I'm not going there anymore. Why do I have to cross the road? It's not convenient for me. Uh, but here the flashier one has come. Uh, so it, it doesn't take much for us to make that switch because that's a convenience based relationship. But what we are talking about here is a commitment based relationship. Agape is, is commitment love. 
it's a, it's a love of covenant. It's a love of choice first, more than uh, feelings. Feelings keep coming and going. Uh, but it's, it's a love that first God has demonstrated to us. The famous verse in Romans chapter 5 says, God demonstrated his love towards us in this, that while we were yet ungodly, yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is a love that chooses uh, to love. This is a love that is not based on the other person's response. And this, this takes a lot of time uh, and a lot of heart surgery from God to realize. Because for us, living in India, we are so used to karma. You do some things good for me, then good things from me will come for you. Uh, but this is totally alien to us. Uh, God says in the book of Hosea, I will love you freely. No strings attached. Uh, I'm here even though you hurt me, uh, even though you're not perfect, even though uh, you know so many things that I expected uh, before getting married have not come to fruition. Uh, I'm here because once upon a time I was an enemy of Christ and I was alienated uh, and I had my fist in God's face uh, and I rebelled against him. I was not just neutral but I was an enemy and uh, he gave himself for me uh, so that he might wash me by his word so that he might present me to him. Um, as a bride. Husbands, we, we ourselves are the bride of Christ and we ourselves experience agape love every day. Um, he turns up every morning for us, even though we have messed up, even though we have grieved him. Uh, he never takes his faithful, loyal, unfailing love, his forgiving love, his cleansing love. Uh, he bears with all our foolishness. He bears with all our shortcomings. Uh, he is uh, our rock, our Lord Jesus Christ. And so that is the calling then for us to demonstrate this agape love. Um, this, this love is supernatural. Uh, we cannot manufacture this love by ourselves. Uh, this love is the fruit of the Spirit, the Bible says. Um, this love is because a new song is in our heart. Uh, this love is because the word of Christ is dominating our mind and heart. This love is because we've been raised up uh, with Christ and he forgives uh, all our transgressions. He's such a forgiving uh, God of covenant and loyal love towards us. And so we are called then to mirror this in a small way. We are called to demonstrate it uh, in the midst of hurt, in the midst of happy days, in the midst of hormone days. In the midst of uh, all kinds of days, we are called to show uh, this steadfast love by the grace of God. Uh, that's the great and high calling. Husbands, love your wives. And then quickly he adds, do not be harsh with them. Uh, there's this background of the curse. Uh, he shall rule over you. And what happens is in the flesh, we tend to be harsh. Uh, there are so many unmet expectations, right from uh, my mom used to not cook this way, uh, all the way to, uh, you know, harsh words and, and so many expectations I had. And um, as husbands, uh, we know some uh, pressure points and some exact words to say, to hit back in vengeance, uh, to hit back, uh, to, uh, to reduce and to take away our... Uh, our care and our appreciation and to give some kind of uh, cold uh, payback and, and sometimes even use harsh words and an angry tone and, and shouting and, and abusing. All of these uh, do not match with agape love. That's what Paul is saying. Do not uh, be harsh with them. She left her uh, parents' home. Uh, she gave you the beauty of her youth. Um, she, uh, for her, that's, that's an amazing thing. And she's uh, born your children and she's been through uh, so, many, um, so many operations or such uh, massive uh, medical uh, things. Um, I wish they would allow husbands to be in the delivery room and um, if we see C-sections, we would probably faint immediately. Uh, but what it does 
to her body, what all she has to go through, um, what all uh, nursing throughout the night means and uh, trying to uh, support the family throughout the day, um, support uh, the ministry throughout the day means all of these um, she is uh, doing for you. And so uh, these are various reasons why you should love and uh, not be harsh. She is also God's project. God is at work and, and this love is a holy purifying love. And as husbands, if one of the main goals in our lives is through my living with her for 40-50 years, she can be made more like Jesus, then it has been worth it. Uh, through my 40-50 years with her, which will pass very fast, uh, her knowledge of Jesus, her love for Jesus, uh, her service towards the saints, her being conformed to the image of Jesus. If I am a boost, if I am a catalyst and God can use me uh, so that his daughter uh, will grow in this whole process and I'll have a small part to play in that, I will be uh, happy and grateful. And so uh, these are various reasons why husbands are called, husbands love your wives and do not be harsh with them. And then Paul goes to children and he says, children who were not at Sunday school this Sunday morning when this Colossae letter was written to you uh, and now Ephiphras has called you out of your Sunday school uh, into the service. Does he say that? He says, children, obey your parents. The, the Sunday school concept was uh, pretty new, 150 years back, uh, maybe started for the orphans in England on a different day or maybe a different time than the church service. Um, if our children can um, attend uh, seminars and online robotics and um, what uh, coding uh, seminars and things like that and track with such complicated things, they can definitely, they can definitely uh, understand the word. They might not get everything, but definitely they should be where Christ is walking amongst his people and Christ is ministering uh, to his uh, people. And so Paul assumes and Paul knows that they will be there. And he says, children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. Children, uh, where if you are uh, children of believing parents, uh, the Bible says uh, you are in some ways holy. Um, you, are, you are in an incredibly privileged place uh, to be uh, um, with the saints of God, to be under the word of God, to be uh, uh, prayed for and to be loved by believers. Uh, you are in an incredibly uh, privileged place. Uh, but the challenge is that this obedience which you have to render, which is good, which is fitting, uh, this obedience will come from the heart as the gospel enters your heart. That's, that's the ultimate prayer of the church. Uh, that's the ultimate prayer of the family. Uh, for children to obey is, is fitting, it's right. Um, the Bible was, is very serious from the Old Testament. Uh, in the book of Deuteronomy, if uh, probably a young man, because it says uh, he's a sluggard and a drunkard and he abuses his parents and he uh, does not listen and he's a rebel, bring him to the, the elders and stone him, the Bible says. God looks, looked at it very seriously in the Old Testament uh, that this is the basic unit, a father sweating, uh, a mother toiling. Uh, if that basic authority structure you are not able to value uh, and love, then there is something uh, seriously wrong. So, so the Bible says, children, obey your parents in everything. Of course, this, this means that except sinning, right? Because Christ is Lord of the family, the ultimate Lord of the family. So except sinning, um, except receiving advice that is contrary to the Bible, uh, children obey your parents. Obedience is hard, uh, but as we look to Christ, if we come to Christ, we see the wonder of his gospel and that he uh, gave up his glory um, and he became a servant for us. And he died to cleanse us and he seeks to fill our hearts by his spirit and his strength. Uh, then this obedience even to our parents can be sweet. I remember as a 20 year old man, um, a young guy, um, 
I clearly remember one of the first things that happened when I became a believer is I would at least uh, think it's important what my parents are telling me. Uh, suddenly there was a switch uh, that what my believing parents are saying is valuable and I need to give a listen. I need to hear them um, because I think they truly love me and they are opening the word and whatever they say to me is according to the word. And I, I just remember one of the first thing is I understood the Bible. The Bible came alive. And the second thing is my relationship with my parents started becoming sweeter. Uh, I was one of the main cause of blood pressure in their lives. Uh, but one of the main first things that happened is um, our relationship started getting uh, sweeter. So that's our ultimate prayer for the church, for the family, that this obedience, which is necessary and important, would be a heartfelt obedience by the grace of God, by the gospel of God, by the spirit of God. And then he says, fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Notice he specifically calls fathers, but it's not exhaustively, I think. Um, the book of Proverbs talks about mothers as well. Uh, listen to the instruction of your mother. But the primary responsibility, and we see the, the, the covenant head of the house over here, is the father. The primary responsibility uh, is the fathers to be training them. Now, if you read this verse, apart from the Ephesians verse, Indian fathers would love this verse. Fathers, do not provoke your children. So, just give them everything. Whatever they want. Uh, pamper them. Don't make them cry. Don't ever expect uh, obedience. Don't train them in the ways of the Lord. Otherwise, they'll be provoked. Uh, so, just keep pampering them. That's not the idea. <laughs> this verse has to be studied with Ephesians where it says, bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Uh, that word is even translated discipline of the Lord. It's a, it's a serious uh, word. Um, sometimes discipline should cause pain. Um, it should, uh, Spurgeon says, by the end of the day, you should be having a headache as parents because the same things you are trying to reiterate and uh, calmly and uh, biblically you are trying to reiterate to the children. Uh, this, these are the ways of the Lord. This is the gospel. Uh, and I'm going to love you. I'm going to discipline you. Um, but, uh, you know, my prayer for you is that uh, you will uh, truly obey from the heart by the grace of God. Uh, so training involves uh, discipline and admonition is instruction in the mind. Uh, biblical instruction with serious warnings, uh, warnings about how life will turn out for you if you don't follow the ways of the Lord, uh, giving them a clear picture. Uh, this, this is where your life is headed and we plead with you and we, we tell you very soberly um, and very honestly what you should do. You should come to Christ. You should uh, walk in the ways of Christ. So, so training and admonition is going on. But the Bible is putting a parameter, uh, the Bible is putting a fence here in Colossians and it says, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Don't provoke them by going overboard. Just because you have not had your coffee, the coffee is over. Um, and uh, my son has done that same thing that he always does and I'm having a hard and difficult day already at work and so many things and you just explode uh, on your son or and he says no 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 I did not do it but you don't give him uh, a chance to to clarify and you just say I know you always do it I know you have done it and uh, you just blast um, uh, the child don't don't do that he says you've been raised up with Christ children are an incredible a gift. You are heavenly minded now. These, these few years, these few decades with them, you want to make the most of them. And uh, as Wody Bokum says, you want to launch them as uh, gospel missiles uh, into this world. You want to make the most. You want to love them. You want to discipline them. You want to train them. You want to pray for them. You want to uh, shape their lives with all you can by the grace of God. Uh, but you don't want to provoke them. Provoke them by your anger. Provoke them by your harsh words. Provoke them by your comparisons. 
uh, I am pretty sure in Kerala there might be comparisons. Um, that guy got 95.67. You got only 87.98. What is going on? Uh, you are, you have to be in the 90s um, and some some kind of unrealistic expectations in the church during service. Uh, I saw you twitching a little bit um, and then big class at home, um, big session at home. Um, so many ways in which we can have unrealistic expectations. We can just uh, take out our frustrations on them and we can use mean and angry words. Sometimes uh, parents provoke or fathers provoke by um, by just switching off from the children uh, by never having any time for them. Uh, you know, there are some kids who later on grow up in life and they say, how sad that my father never disciplined me. He never thought it uh, important to warn me of the ways of the world and where my life will head. He never sat and read the Bible, enjoyed time with me. Um, he was never there with his full focus and his full heart. Uh, it was always something at the back of his mind that was more important. And for the sake of doing things, uh, just for the sake of it, he was with me. And in, in that way also, we can provoke uh, our children uh, working so hard to get things for them, but not being there for them. That's also one way in which uh, children are amazing. They are, they are sponges. They are able to absorb everything. Our body language, our priorities, our values, uh, what we prioritize, everything they are absorbing indirectly. And how sad it will be that uh, they may be provoked that uh, when, I am, when I need my parents the most, when I need that advice the most, uh, they were not there uh, for me. So there are various ways in which we can provoke them and make them discouraged. But the Bible is saying that you have been raised up with Christ. You have a heavenly mind now about husbands, about wives, about how we are to mirror this gospel love and this, it's, it's a mirror of the great love story of Christ and His church. You have a heavenly mind now. These children are a blessing. They are a gift from God. God has changed your attitude towards children. You view them as blessings. You view them as an opportunity now to train them in the ways of the Lord, to pray for them and to love them and serve them. And uh, you see them as uh, gifts that ought to be uh, raised up for the glory of Christ and for the glory of God. And so uh, this morning, uh, if as parents you are struggling, there is uh, cleansing for you in the grace of God. There is power for you. There is resurrection power for you. So that you might uh, repent and that you might uh, treat um, children with firmness and yet uh, gentleness. Uh, firmness where there should be firmness but with the proper limits and gentleness which is a gift uh, and which is a fruit of the Spirit of God. As children this morning if you've been somebody who is known for always resisting always rebelling. There's grace for you. There's um, the blood of the cross which was shed to reconcile you to the Father. There's a new life in Christ for you. There is new power, new strength to be renewed in your mind, to be an obedient child who values what the parents are trying to say. As wives, if it's been a big struggle and you've always resisted this and you've always wondered why this verse is in the Bible, there's heavenly wisdom for you in Christ. Trust uh, our wise Christ. Trust uh, the power of Christ that he can give you the strength to look at the wisdom uh, here and submit. And as husbands, if, been, if we've been uh, karmic husbands, uh, you scratch my back, I'll scratch you, live up to my expectations and then I will love you. Look at Christ uh, this morning and how he ever loveth, uh, never ceaseth, as the hymn writer says. Uh, think of uh, his blood, think of his work, uh, think of the new life and power that you already have in Christ and find the grace and the resources and the sufficiency in Christ 
to show that agape love, even undeserved love to our spouses. And in doing this, may the Lord strengthen families, uh, make them small heavenly homes and uh, may the light shine brighter in the dark places here in this city as they see a family that belongs to Christ walking with Christ. That's our prayer for you and, and I trust you will pray for us back in Pune that the Lord would build families on the rock that is Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful time, Lord. We realize that we need so much grace, especially in family. We spend a short time at church with one another, but we are always with our family all the time. And that's where we are truly exposed and we realize that we fall so short. But thank you for the grace in Christ Jesus uh, that never fails us. Lord, we plead for that grace and mercy and strength, plead for the blood to cleanse us, Plead for the power of your spirit to help us each day take family life seriously, uh, to take life with our spouses seriously, to take life with our kids seriously, Lord. And to uh, do this family life uh, for your glory and in your power. That, Lord, uh, one generation may declare to another generation the mighty greatness of our Lord. Lord, to that end, help us and strengthen us. We ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen.